Hey, what's going on? It's Glendon with Hustlers Kung Fu. All about making that money on a job. Today, we're going to talk about hustle, the most misused word ever. If you're just hustling, all you did was create yourself a job. And that could be good because you're creating yourself a job that you like. You're creating yourself a job that gives you more options, but it's still a job. If you're happy with that, that's real cool. But if you want to get wealthy and you want to really start a business, listen up and check out this stream. That's right. It's a live stream. It's live right now. Later on, it won't be live. So don't put in the comments like, is this live? Because you will look kind of stupid. Anyway, let's jump off into it. Today, the specials are a little different. Under the stream, which will later be a video, there is Uncivilized Profits, which is beta, and the Never Broke Action Pack, which is at 70% off. So you may want to grab that if you never want to be broke again. Now let's talk about hustle, the most misused word ever. You have people who are hustling their face off, who are doing multiple streams of income and they're, they're doing all this stuff, but they have no freedom. They're working 80 hours a week. When you factor in all the hours, they're a little burnout, a little shaggy, a little rough around the edges. The coat is not as shiny. They need a little more protein in their diet. So it gets to be really, really interesting. Now let me go to the chat room to see what's in there. Also, Share this video right now with someone you care about. Like you don't care about it, forget it. You know, no, they, they really they're probably not good people anyway. That's why you don't care about them. But definitely share this video right now. Share it on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever you got, do it. All right, now into the chat room. Owning it looks like a, I'm a little early. <laughs> you know what I'm gonna start doing? I'm gonna start doing like specials for folks who show up early. I'll do that. Uh, Donna Modessa, you're not going to miss it. You just come back and watch it later. Oh, <laughs> how many <laughs> profiles do you have? All right, that's funny. What's up, Nigel? Uh, Rundy, wow, they let you do another video after last night. <laughs> uh, what's up, Shalice? What's up, Gerald? Keith, what's going on? I like the newer dark background, soft lighting, looks super professional. Appreciate it. What's up, Templar King? What's up, Diana? Carlton, Mike Page, John Francis, Jen, Izzy. What's up, Keith? Big Short, Canna. Monica, what's up? Of Divine Purpose, Media Asset. <laughs> All right, good morning. Good morning, morning, morning. What up, Rules for Rebels? What's up, Punk 87SEP? What's up, Amina? <laughs> What's up, Says? And Crash Test Dummy Pro. What's up? I love that name. I love that name. All right, so let, let's just jump off into the whole thing of why hustle is the most misused word ever. Now, I'm going to give you a few examples of hustling and what I've done and what I how I hustle and how I build businesses. They are very, very different. This is what happens when you hustle. Now, let's go way, way back. You know, if I had special effects, I would make the screen go all fuzzy and stuff when we go back in time. When I built the upscale garage sale, that was a business. And it wasn't it was a it was a good business, but from a manager standpoint and an organizational standpoint, it was a failure because when I got sick and my partner developed cancer, we had no one to run the business and neither one was in shape, so it had to shut down. But we did have enough juice where if, you know, if we wanted to go somewhere, the business still went on because it wasn't just me. So if my partner wanted to take a vacation, she could. If I wanted to take a vacation, we could, and stuff did not stop. But since we both got sick, it stopped. So hustles, or anything that if you're not part of it, it's a job. It's a job, man. It's a job, woman. It's a job. 
which could be good because if you go ahead and you create your own job and you make 100 G's, you're doing your own thing, you're building your own, that's good. This is, let's, let's be really clear. It's not that that's bad. It is good to create your own job. That's great to create your own job. But to get to the elite level, you have to create a business, which means that this is what you're doing. Okay, let's just say, let's take Nick Saban, Roll Tide, right? He used to be a defensive back when he played. Then he matriculated to the side of the field. See, when you are the job, you're the defensive back. You are the worker. You're the technician. For you to become a manager, you have to become the defensive back coach. For you to become a managing partner, you have to become one of the, the head coaches. Like, you know, there's the defensive back coach. There is the running backs coach, but there's the DC. So the DC is like the VP, right? So the defensive coordinator for the backs is the, the, uh, the VP. And the CEO is the head coach. So there's defensive back, there's defensive back coach, there is the defensive coordinator, one level, two level, three levels. And then fourth is the head coach, which is the CEO. Most folks are the defensive back. They're not even the defensive back coach because they have no employees. They're not even the DC because they have no layers of organization. So hustle is the most important word ever. I fundamentally disagree because hustle can be a trap. Oh, we got more people coming in here. Let's see. Uh, what's up, Lance? AKW Beats. We got another uh, beat guy that came in last night. Let's see. Ronnie Less Than Pie. Less than, a lot of people here today. Yeah, you know, it's growing. Uh, typically, people come in like 10 minutes in. Everyone's here except the host. That's hilarious. Let's see. It's custom to some motherfucking hustler. <laughs> What's up, Kizera? Quizer, Y'all have some interesting names. All right, so you're the defensive back, or if you like offense, you're the wide receiver, you're the running back, because offense, which is better, because there's offense, there's the running backs, and there are the wide receivers, and there's the O-line, and then the quarterback is like an on-field manager because there's more layers. There's like four layers, the defense. Actually, it's not the same because there's usually a defensive guy on the field calling shots too. So it's like five layers. So I want you to think, uh, for military structure, you even see this too. Uh, anybody who's in the military, have you heard of the term action jack? That's where you get the E5 stripes, but you don't get the power. You, you get the authority, I'm sorry, you get the authority, you get the power, but you don't get the money. That's why it's called acting jack. That's like they'll promote the need for up for a minute to kind of run some stuff, which is kind of a prelude to, hey, they may become a sergeant some point in the future, right? But to me, it was always a gank, and I avoided that. I assiduously avoided that. But if you're just hustling, you're that defensive back, you're that running back, when you stop running, you stop making money. So that's why hustle is the most misused word ever because unless you're building a business, unless you are putting systems into place, and I'm gonna give you the ultimate matriculation from hustle to business owner. Give me just a minute, let's see. That is funny. That is hilarious. Let's see. Yo-Yo Clock eBay, what's up? All right, so here it is. Now, everybody knows who Jerry Jones is. Everyone knows who Alan Kraft is. Jerry Jones, because he's outrageous. Alan Kraft, because I think he has four or five Super Bowl rings with his team, right? So with that, Alan Kraft is the ultimate destination. And with that... It is, we're going to walk through the layers of, we're going to take, 
I'm going to take one of the running backs. I don't even know who the running backs are for the, the Patriots. So you got a running back, and then that's one level. Guy gets paid well because he's doing his job. As long as he does his job very well, he will get paid well, and he won't get traded or cut. Then the next level is going to be Tom Brady, who is also hustling. I know it sounds crazy, but if Tom Brady, he got suspended. He didn't get paid. If he gets hurt, uh, I forget how they pay players when they get hurt, but he ain't working. So receiver, Tom Brady, then you got your O-line coach because, you know, in the NFL, there's more. You got your O-line coach. You got your backs coach. So one, two, three, four, five, six levels. Let's see. Running back. Let's see. Quarterback. Defensive, offensive coordinator. Let's say six levels. Then you got Belichick, the evil gnome, which is level seven. And then you got the supreme level, Alan Kraft. He's up in the booth watching the game from up high. And he doesn't have to hire anyone. He doesn't have to participate in day-to-day activities unless he wants to because there are people in place to do the branding, to do the hiring, to run the show. Level eight, that's when you're up in that that field box. That's the ultimate level. When you're there, you you got it going on. You're not hustling. You've built an enterprise, you've built a business. And if Alan Kraft was to pass, and I'm not wishing anything on this guy, I think he's a pretty cool dude, but if he was to pass, the Patriots would keep on trucking. They'd be like, wow, we're really sorry he's gone. I mean, they would probably have a tribute. Because if you know his story, he got to own the Patriots because of a Michael Jackson concert. Because he bought the rights to, he bought the stadium and all the rights for events, right? And then when the former owner of the Patriots got into trouble, he it was able to swoop in and take advantage. So he was really, you know, he wanted to bring a champion because the Patriots sucked for years. They sucked for years. He wanted to bring a championship team to his hometown, and he did that. So there would be, like, you know, the big procession and stuff when he dies because he's a statesman. But it would go on. If he died to yesterday, they will still be playing this weekend. It doesn't. That's the system. That's the thing. That That's just way past hustling. And that's what if you want to have perpetual wealth, that's the kind of things that you got to build. Big short, I feel stuck. I moved forward this year, but not sure how. I don't know what you mean. Let's see. Never broke action pack. Big short, get the end goal and backtrack from your roadmap to success. Yes. Uh, I'm 24 and hungry. Need a minute like you. This is what you do, man. Go to... Hustlers Kung Fu, the channel, and just start watching videos, man. There's all kinds of subject matter. Just hit the playlist and just watch a video a day. I mean, literally, you could watch a video a day on this channel for, what, 1,500? Three or four years. So, hey, get busy. (laughs) All right, let's see. Good point, Never Broke Action Pack. Cheatable, good morning. Says Leo, is this social spirit? I'm in it for the long haul. That's funny. That is hilarious. This is no shaving December. And let's get rid of that. We're not, we, we, we're, we're talking to the people. But that's what you should be doing. Now, let's how you do your hustles. Like uh, this channel. This channel started off as a hustle. Now, due to the vast powers of the internet, I was able to systemize this hustle where I really didn't have to do a lot for a few years. Uh, storage auctions were hot, book pro- the products were selling, Pippi Craigslist was selling, making money A to Z with self-storage and auctions was selling. I mean, it, it was literally on autopilot. It was just like, psh, psh, just print money, just just literally print money. It, it, was, it was awesome. But I was able to systemize that because due to the internet, you can create a lot of systems. So if you're not a systems guy, Find one because you're going to need a systems guy to help your business where you can get to that eighth level where you're just the guy in the field house. You don't even go into the office. You, I mean, it's just everything is automated using 
organic beings, carbon, carbon based life forms. So that's part of why hustle is the most misused word, because when it's like hustle, I'm doing it. I run everything. I have my eye on everything. You're going to drive yourself crazy and burn out and you're going to torpedo any growth you can have by being that much of a control freak. Control freaks, you'll hear this like, you know, Bezos and Gates and these people are control freaks. They may be control freaks in a certain department, but if they were the true control freaks that I know of control freaks, none of their companies would have grew as big as they did. I mean, you got people who are making decisions out there in the field like Belichick, right? He's over there on the sideline and then Brady throws the curl, but oh, wait a minute, something happens. And then we're going to know the, uh, the defensive side and one of the backs knows what Brady likes to do in this situation. He makes a management decision on the field that the defensive coordinator doesn't know about because he's uh, empowered to do that. So he cuts his break. He jumps the route. He gets an interception, pick six. That's what happens when you create systems because you have people in your organization who are making decisions and you don't even know about it. That is how that goes down. Okay, I'm having the middle block in business. I have to move to the next level. I'm working on my systems right now. I still feel like I'm hustling every day. Donna Thompson implode. Control freaks need tempering. Because this, this is the thing. Because one of the problems with scaling the storage auction business was a key component was buying, which means you had to trust somebody to go to the st storage unit auction give them a lot of money and trust that they would make good decisions. So there was one, two, it was three big areas of risk that I never was able to wrap my head around because you could train someone to buy, but how many people here are comfortable giving someone five to 20 grand cash of your money to go spend? So I never got past that. And I think from, that's why I said what we built was an operational failure because that was the big problem. And you've got to build something like that because when I worked for Horizon Pacific, they had people that went to India, Asia, and other places, and they spent millions of dollars on products, but they were empowered and they were trusted to do that. Let's see. Um, Owning it. All I saw was the chat room until I refreshed. I don't know how much I missed. Well, owning it. Let's see. You have missed uh, about 18 minutes. <laughs> That's what you've missed. Uh, storage auctions were unique too. It's not like Alibaba where you can pull analytics and make a pretty sure decision. Storage units are all unique. Rules that's from Rules for Rebels. That was another gotcha of the business because it was very hard. Like, we systemized shipping, we systemized, uh, the, uh, you know, how to unload the trucks, we systemized pricing. But that whole thing was so hard, and that's a reason I think uh, it, it makes it challenging for resellers to create huge systems. I think a hustling reseller can get up to a million dollars a year. I really think, you know, you, you're going to have a warehouse clearly because you're going to be moving a lot of product. You're not, well, you won't be doing this out of your house. And it's just going to hit a ceiling because of certain things that are in the business that are just hard to get around. King flip. I'm trying to build a system with partners. I don't think it's going to work because they don't, ex they don't execute. Uh, typically if you're going to partner with somebody, they need to be at your level or two levels higher. And they need to bring something more to the table than money. Because let's just say you got five friends, right? And nobody has any money. You're the sixth broke person in the circle. Who you hang around with is a reflection of how you live. I cannot emphasize that. People thought I was crazy for wanting to, you know, spend a lot of money living in a certain neighborhood. That's just too much money. You can go over to the deck 
man, you can get you a four bedroom house, uh, mortgage like nine ninety nine, and have gunshots in my backyard at night. Let me tell you a little story. I used to live in a place called East Atlanta, not too far from East Atlanta Village. It was a neighborhood that was going through gentrification. There was Kirkwood, Inman Park, Oak, Oak, let's see, was it Oakwood, Oak Town? I forget the name of it. But it, all of these areas of these older, really charming craftsman bungalow houses. And the prices were crazy because someone would buy a house for 80, 90, maybe 150, and just completely gut it out, renovate it. Flip it for 450, two some to 450. So gentrification was running wild. I used to live in that neighborhood, uh, lived in a house that had been remodeled. It looked pretty swank, but I was in the basement working out. Then I hear all this uh, boom, 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 boom. I'm like, what the hell? And then I see a pair of feet because I had like these little square windows. And I see these feet run by the windows. And then I see these other feet run by the windows. Like, what the hell? So I go upstairs and I go outside and I look over and in my neighbor's yard, there's a cop with his knee in the back of someone that had just shot somebody. That, you know, 250, 300, $400,000 houses, plus a very high crime rate. Uh, this was also break-ins were rampant. Uh, there was, I had a you know, friend who lived in a similar neighborhood. Her house had, was broken into five times. And she refused to get any more flat screen televisions. She just left her house open. She said, it saves me money on locks. It saves me money on broken glass. I'm like, who, who wants to fucking live like that? So typically, when you live in a neighborhood where everybody's flowing or working and striving, you just don't have as much crime because these people are getting what they want. Now, I'm not going to condone crime, but you know, your kid is like screaming because they need food and the only way you can get money is to steal. I mean, that's pretty much that poor neighborhoods have high crime rates because people have no money. Not condoning it. I'm just saying I understand the process. That is hilarious. Says, I don't feel comfortable giving a fool $5 to get changed. Damn, boy, you silly. D. Wilson, how many people did you have on your team that helped develop the system? Two of us. Uh, we developed a system. We had at the highest point 12 employees. Yes. I'm originally from Mass. People don't realize how big Patriot, big Patriots are. 50% of the people are wearing their shirts. I remember when they had the light blue and the fatter little Patriot guy on the helmets, they were garbage for years. He bought that team and turned them around. Robert Kraft is not Alan Kraft, it's Robert Kraft. Naso, that area is going through a lot of gentrifications and home buying up. Um, last night when I was talking about what I was talking about, I mentioned something about HIV medication signs. In that neighborhood, as Naso just put in there, I used to walk around and I would see HIV, medica med HIV medication signs in that neighborhood. So they say, you absolutely correct. That's why they were there. Uh, King Flip, they have connections and experience that, that I don't, but they move too slow to take advantage of these opportunities. I could start myself and be kicking their ass in uh, 45 days. I would move on. Own it. She could have gotten some dog to leave the doors unlocked. That's some stuff. Izzy uh, Tarvis. T. Harv Ecker talks a lot about stabbing his systems. When I worked at rent crate I'm going to give you a great example of systems. rent crate had a system for me to call prospective clients. I had to make 50 phone calls a day. It's like 250 calls a week. That was the expectation because their system was if I made my 50 phone calls and 50 phone call was not leaving a message on the answer machine. It was like I had to call someone and talk to somebody. So I really was making like 200 phone calls a day. But see, you know, that's kind of in their, their, their propaganda, how they got me. So if you talk to 50 people a day, five days a week, we're going to get business. 
because they had worked out that system. They knew the numbers. They knew that if a fool came in and was like, all I can do is dial. If that fool dial 50 people like, hey, my name fool, they were going to make money. Uh, they had a system for loading the trucks. They had a system for uh, doing trade shows. They had systems all over the place. And the owners of that company actually sold it because they had systems and a unique unique offer for the marketplace. So systems are the business. They're not just, they're, they're mandatory. Ronnie, you're my mentor. How do you feel about me learning from Grant Cardone? This is my thing. I don't have a jealous bone in my body. I think everybody needs to do what they need to do to make their life, their business, the best it can be because I like Grant and Grant to me is one of the realer people online because he has a history. He has a past and it wasn't all sweet. I mean, he'll admit he, didn't, he damn near lost his ass when real estate turned. He said that's the reason he wrote uh, 10X, the 10X rule. He was about to go under because <clears throat> he was so leveraged so he had to start all this massive action to bring more money in to pay those bills that's why i like grant he's actually said that there's a lot of folks out here they're like I, it's just i'm good all the time i don't make mistakes you know it's just it's wild uh let's see big short home buying is down 2.5 percent 2007 will have a good return of six percent in ga only one percent higher Sale of Washington, checking out the home buying here. It's bananas. Gentrification is rampant. I'm going to tell you why I think it's rampant. I look at myself. I have not lived outside of the perimeter. If you're not in Atlanta, perimeter is 285, and then there's everything that's in 285 tends to be pretty expensive. I've not lived outside the perimeter in seven years. Uh, there, there's many beautiful communities up in Alpharetta. Johns Creek, uh, you go down to Douglasville, there's uh, Chattahoochee Hills, which is like a futuristic community down that way. There's tons and tons of beautiful neighborhoods all over Atlanta. However, I will pay the money to live where I want to live for the convenience. I don't have to get on the highway to get anything I, I want. I can go to the mall. I can do a whole bunch of stuff and hit side streets. I don't have to get on the highway unless I want to get on the highway. I can get, I've got what, four or five targets within five miles, three malls, um, several movie theaters, grocery stores, everybody delivers. I will pay for that because I don't want to be driving an hour of my life one way to go to my job. I don't want to do that. But many people do because that's what they have to do because they can't get the kind of house they want close to where they work. So, you see a lot of people who are sick and tired of these long commutes and they're going to these older ethnic neighborhoods in these metropolitan areas and they're buying stuff up like crazy because they're tired of us. I mean, it's a quality of life issue. If you spend two to three hours a day in your car getting to your job or on MARTA or on the transit system, that is a lot of fucking time over the multiple of a year. That's a lot of that's time you can start your business. <laughs> Three hours a day, that's enough time to start a million dollar business. So it's a lot of time. <clears throat> Tony Robbins is a true, he's a marketing genius. Rules Rebel, what's Atlanta set up? My folks live in Charleston. And you got to get on those little bridge highways to go anywhere. Uh, Charleston's, Charleston's really different, and Charleston has a lot of the damn money because people don't know the history of Charleston because it's a port. It's a lot of money near ports. Traffic in Atlanta was terrible. Oh, it's just going to get worse, Sean. It's going to get much worse. CJ Lee, there's an area going through gentrification in Birmingham. They're adding interstates and three new bridges around the 6520 junction. That hillside has a sick view of that skyline. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it at all. Everything is located downtown. Uh, Marietta is its own metropolitan, like Cobb County. If you don't know anything about Cobb County, Cobb County is like its own metropolis. It has Fortune 500 companies, no, Fortune, yeah, Fortune 500, Home Depot. Uh, there's some other stuff there. And you can live, work, and play in Cobb County. 
And this summer, you can go to a Braves game in Cobb County. And it's all near that little Metroplex, which what I see is downtown Atlanta and that part of Cobb County, they're building toward each other. You can just see it because when you come down 41 at a certain point, you can see the Atlanta skyline and it's not that far. Um, Mustafa Cobb is, is, is obtaining a home on credit. The reason why people lose their homes when the real estate market crash. Yeah, well, not the credit. They just didn't have the money to pay the mortgage. Uh, Ronnie, I'm in Florida and I've been wanting to visit Georgia so bad. Where should I go? Um, I don't, what you want to see, book a hotel um, for the weekend in downtown, go to the aquarium, the world of Coca-Cola, you know. Oh, it's just Google it. Snob County. That's hilarious. Greg Williams, gentrification is happening all over Brooklyn, New York. The locals do not have the financial resources to buy their homes. Nope. Uh, those 110 mil for income verification loans. Yeah, they got rid of those. But when you're hustling and you're hustling only and you have not, and this is another issue with hustling. You're hustling so hard, you have no time, mental bandwidth to actually think about building a business. Your thought is, let's make money. Your thought isn't, let's build a business. You must sit down and think, how can I build a business? Uh, this is one of the reasons, like this year has been a very transformational year for me. I've gotten rid of a lot of stuff and I've really decided what makes me happy? What I really wanna work on. So, you know, I, it frustrates people, but if it's not making me happy, I will get rid of it. And I, it drives people crazy, but the thing is, if I'm happy and I'm fulfilled, like this shit's starting to be more fun. Cause in the beginning I was like, I don't know if this is gonna work. And I start getting all of these funny people. Y'all have some killer uh, comment conversations in the comments. And I'm like, this is fun. So, okay, we can do this. It's fun. Good group of people. Oh, yeah, and I'm making money too. What's not to like? Being homeless ass out in the city and hustle is how you live my business. Rules for rebels. You think time can split between short-term hustles to bring immediate gratification as well, having a long-term project? Well, um, I don't think so. I think what you should do is hustle to get, you know, hustle is getting that stuff off the ground. But you should carve out an hour a day to think about your business from not a, I got to make money right now to, like, I'll give you an example. <clears throat> Let's say you start off hustling on eBay and Amazon, and most people get caught because you can make money on eBay and Amazon. So you get caught and you just built yourself a job on someone else's farm that if they don't like your sharecropping, they're gonna get rid of you, or they're gonna reduce your benefits or reduce your plot of land or whatever. But you're doing that and all of your mindset, all of the information that you consume, everything that you read is to continue to make money there and you're spending no time over here thinking how you can make money with your business in the future. Um, I cut out a lot of stuff so I could think about building a media company. It's like, what is this gonna take? Uh, what have I gotta do? What do I have to give up? So the first thing that I had to do was get monthly income. I had to hammer out something that was consistent that didn't take a lot of time, and I did that. Then the next step, was well a lot of things kind of happened concurrently then i started getting much better consulting clients i mean way better and i don't even have that many of them right now but they're like top shelf and then i'm at a point where i'm still working a lot because it's, you know i'm doing a lot of research for clients but i have time to build this business because i'm not running 100 percent when you're hustling you have to run 100% because when the money's on the table, you got to take it because if you let up, that money may not be on the table anymore. But as you build a business, you build systems, you build marketing, you do content marketing, which takes time. You know, there's no immediate like, okay, we did this today, Friday, we get money. It doesn't work like that. But we did this this year. Next year, we're getting all of these customers from this pipeline, from this website, from this marketing that we built. And now we're still doing that. So we're getting those folks and we're getting new folks. And all of a sudden, it's like you're like, shh, shh. you're making like 10 G's a month, 10 G's a month. Then year four, you're making like 400,000 a month. 
That's like growing a business. But if you're just hustling and your hands are on everything, you can't grow because you only have two hands. So I think you have to have some kind of matriculation of your hustle because you do the short term hustles. And part of this is mental. This is how much space do you have to think about stuff? I mean, that's something you got to think about. So, I, you know, and ask your questions, Rules for Rebels. I think you should sit down, and this is kind of uh, what I'm doing with Uncivilized Profits, and this is what I'm offering, like, under the video, you can go ahead and grab the Never Broke Action Pack, or you can get into Uncivilized Profits, because Uncivilized Profits is a marketing propaganda course, teaching people how to do marketing using propaganda, because it's highly effective. Uh, Never Broke Action Pack is get your money together because this is the number one stressor. This is the number one marriages breakup. This is the number one families trip out. Lack of money. I don't care what anyone says. If there is so much money, like I'm, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a real moment with y'all. We're gonna be real. When I got to a point in my life, and it took years to get there, that I didn't worry about money anymore. I mean, I know it sounds strange, but I just didn't worry about it. I was like, if I do this, 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 I'm going to have money. I just stopped worrying about money. I remember a point that money occupied 80% of my cerebral cortex. How do I get money? How do I keep money? How do I make more money? That's all I thought about. I, there was no room for building businesses. So you get these short-term hustles and you don't have a plan, a written plan, not a plan in your head, but a written plan with dates, uh, timelines. And more likely it won't happen. Uh, Tanya Perry, Cobb County Rocks, lived here 25 years. Uh, Blake, I just got a five-year partnership this past month because we were hustling, not forming a real business. Future income building, big short. Greg Williams, developers are not buying single family homes either. Every property they buy is being turned into luxury condos. Locals can't afford the two to three thousand rent. Let me tell you why. If that code says you can build on that that plot that one house used to be and you can go four stories you can go five stories you can go ten stories the multiples on there are crazy yeah nay so do does youtube pay for live commerce like this okay um i don't know i never thought about it let's see what's up yolanda what's up alice systems and goals or everything blake My folks' apartment building would soon be turned to condos. They got to go. Uh, Alice Hardy, I got to learn how to look sexy. <laughs> That's funny. Ronnie, I'm uh, HVAC, and I get commission on stuff I sell, so I guess I got a job and a hustle, but I want freedom. Okay, thank you. I just realized I built a system. And, um, I'll give you how I built a system in the storage auction space. I developed what was called buying profiles. And see, this is the thing. When you build your own company and you build certain things for yourself, they're just out, they're not out there. I realized people disproportionately pay more money for smaller units. And I saw this over and over again. Here's a unit, you know, 10, 5 by 5, 5 by 10. These were smaller units. Most people can move to smaller units. When I made the investment into getting into the bigger trucks, the crews, I was able to handle as many big units as I could buy. But proportionally, for the same money, I got five to 10 to 20 times more merchandise. So I just saw that early on. And when I saw 10 by 20, if I just saw a few things, like if I saw a bedroom set or saw a headboard or stuff, if it was just a few pieces of the puzzle, and I was like, okay, if that bedroom set in there, I could spend 500 and not lose my ass and this other stuff would be profit. And I developed these buying profiles, and as I start to perfect them, I stopped losing money on units. Uh, there were units that I knew I was going to lose money because I lost my head, and I, I just chalked that to the game. But whenever I stayed with my buying profiles for unit size, we always made money. So these are the kind of systems that I'm talking about. You can do it anywhere. Let's see. Uh... Punks, let's just be honest. Let's just be real. 
listening pot guy dip guy. All right, see you next time. Edwards, once you're comfortable financially, you can't start forgetting about some of the money you have. Um, this is going to sound really funny, and it was a moment that kind of was emotional because I had a jacket, and I didn't wear the jacket for like two years. It's a leather jacket, which incidentally came out of a storage unit, and I put it on the other day, and it was 600 bucks in the pocket. I remember a point in my life, there was no way in hell I could misplace 600 bucks and it not be top of mind, and I was like, wow, things have changed. There, I knew where every penny was. I knew how much money was in the ashtray in my car. I, it was just, you get to the point where you develop a true abundance mindset. You become more generous. Uh, I started tipping way better than I used to. I started, I started forgetting about money. I mean, it's strange. I had an account that I didn't really put any money in, and I went in there. Oh, shit, I forgot about this. That's what happens when you focus on the mechanisms to make money versus focusing on the money. When you focus on the money, it's usually everything's tight, tight, tight. But when you start focusing on the process, you start focusing on the mechanism, you be having money and you go, oh shit, I forgot that. So yeah, it, it gets real interesting, Edward. It gets very interesting. Uh, totally off topic, how do you get that black background you like you got going on? Uh, I'm using the light from the screen on my camera. That's pretty much it. I'm in the same basement. Never broke action pack. When you consider YouTube a service-based business, my other channel has 16 subs and teaching music. How can I scale? I would not consider YouTube a service-based business. I consider YouTube a opportunity. Number one, you don't know. I don't own YouTube. You don't own on YouTube. Anything can happen. So it's you know it's on someone else's saying. But I see YouTube as a marketing vehicle. I see YouTube as an exposure vehicle. I see YouTube as a lot of things for you to get money. If you wanted to make money with music, you're going to have to create a lot of content and get people to go somewhere and buy it. So. Yeah, but I don't see YouTube as a, I mean, it is a service, <clears throat> it is a service putting out content, helping people uh, in that regard, but like a service business, like cutting grass, uh, painting, uh, pressure washing, no, not even close. The cinematic wedding. I have a client that wants to build a social media presence. He has a doctor has any suggestions how would i charge to post and create content on his behalf uh there's a group of people google social media manager i know people who, who pay people anywhere from 500 dollars a month up to 10 g's a month for people who do that stuff it just depends on how big the business is and how much they have to work so just google social media manager big short hot funny i did that with my sky jacket found 350 in the pocket off topic I used to find a lot of money in clothes. I remember I missed some money. The lady bought a jacket and she had put it on because it was cold, right? And she comes back and she goes in the pocket and she pulls out a wad of cash and she's like, how much for the jacket? I said, what's in your hand? She said, no, what's that much for the jacket? I was like, you haven't bought it. So she gave me half the money and bounced. I was like, she got a free jacket and some money. I mean, it was funny. What are you talking about, Yolanda? Mustafa, so since they did not have the money to pay for the house, they should have not obtained it in the credit because if you can't buy something cash, that means you can't afford it. Uh, there's a lot of different rules of thoughts on that. I am a person that believes in the use of credit. Uh, credit used wisely can make you wealthy. So let's be clear. I'm not of the, you know, I love Dave Ramsey, but I'm not in his camp. When you buy a house and you haven't really studied the whole house buying process just because you have a good credit score and you have the income there's a lot into having a house uh there's all kinds of shit that goes on um my neighbors every week i see some kind of service thing from a plumber to an electrician those costs don't factor into it so if you get a house and this is my rule of thumb after you buy the house, after your down payment and stuff, you should still have 50 G's in the bank. That way, if shit goes south, you lose your job, you don't lose your house. That's just my opinion. So it's not that they didn't have, they couldn't afford it. They just weren't really prepared as they should have been. 
That's my thoughts. So, all right, with that, for those of you speaking of money, grab the Never Broke Action Pack. That's the way for you to manage the money that you have. It's under the video. Just go ahead and grab it. Manage the money that you have, make a little bit more money, and create a better financial system for yourself. Then when you start your business, you can ball out. I'm going to tell you something in a minute. I'm going to check the comments. Oh, okay. Yeah, the abundance mindset is really, really important. Uh, only I, f I find that our economic system is basically mostly on debt. Try Googling any Ray. <laughs> yeah, Ray Dalio's video is on point because these booms and busts are manufactured. Here what happens with the abundance mindset. Okay. Let's just say uh, this pin is your current cash. Now, properly managed, this pin represents all the money that you have, and it can pay all of your bills, and you can even save a little bit if you manage it really well. Okay, so we get this pin, then what we do is we create another pin. But we manage this pin, and then when we create this pin, that's that thing called stacking because you are efficiently handling this pin so this new money comes in it isn't immediately absorbing your lifestyle because that's what happens to people it's called a lifestyle creep and that's another reason that people can't start businesses because no financial discipline if you make enough money to pay all your bills and you have like two G's left over if you get raw rugged and you know pare it down that's a lot of money to start a business and there are a lot of people who are there but they just you know having too much fun never broke Action pack, get the action pack, it will change your name. <laughs> That's funny. All right. I love purple. I will check it out, owning it. Edward Lewis, they said that you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. <clears throat> Having a hard time finding people that locally they're light minded. Any suggestions? Move move seriously if you are not an introvert who can spend a lot of time by yourself and be very creative and you need social interaction and you need that juice of exciting people and they are not <clears throat> in your <clears throat> town you're gonna have to move <clears throat> Key line, like, yeah i mean seriously if i wanted to sell weed i would move to denver california or seattle I would not lament like, oh, fuck, George is so slow. I can't wait till they bring the legalization of selling weed here. See, here's the thing. If you know how business works, the people, the first movers in Denver, um, Washington and California, they're making so much money that when the laws change in these other states, they have the money, they have the system, they have the weed. Who do you think is going to move into these other states and take over? These established companies, these first mover companies, that's why you need to move out there and get into it because you're not going to be able to compete with a company that's going to move the town that's got like $10 million to establish a new franchise in another state. They got the money to, and they've already been through the regulatory bullshit. They've already got the licenses. Uh, they've already got the banking down. You're competing against a monster, and a lot of people don't know it because it's going to happen. Only it's tough when you're new in business. The established businesses, people don't take you seriously yet. The old crowd thinks you're nuts and just jealous. Uh, like I said, you show them something that they don't know. Like um, older people, whenever I talk to older business folks and I start talking about the internet and I talk about it my way, they always listen. You, you got to show them some results. <laughs> Money just called me, offer on my investment home, got to go. Big short, get that money, get that money, go <laughs> get it short. What I like is we have a lot of people, and it's funny, the sun just came up and you can kind of see the back of the room. That's that's interesting because it'll do that. But Keenan, I had to leave my small hometown. I moved to Houston. There are so many opportunities and I make way more money. Yep, 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 yep. Let's see, where are we with this? Okay, I'm going to really bounce in a minute. So for, the, for those of you, I'm going to do something. Uh, let's see. K 
can I do that? Let's see. I think I can do this. Hold on a second. One of the things that I'm going to start doing is <laughs> that's wild how the sun is playing with that. One of the things I'm going to do is start making what I call in-stream offers. You mean if you're not on the stream, you can't get it. For the folks who show up, let's see what I'm going to do. Which one? Which one? You know what? I'm not going to do that one. I'm going to do this one. Something else, too, that I've learned, and one of the things that's urged me to get into business is I saw a guy be extremely generous, and uh, he could do it because – he owned the business and he can make those kind of decisions. So what I'm going to do is, all right, I'm going to do 10 essential steps and I'm going to make that very, very, come on. There we go. Let's see. I'm going to hook some people up here. Let's see. For the folks who are in the live stream, I'll be back in a minute. I'm just playing around with this. Let's see what's in this. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, yeah, I can do that. This accumulation, so I'm going to make this... Once my Mac stops the spinning wheel, this is normally like 200 bucks. So this is going to be 50. And once the stream is over, this offer is over. So what you're going to get is 10 essential steps to hustling. You're going to get how to make money without a job. Hustling 101 to 105, how to start a business for 500. Build a tribe, lead the tribe. You're going to get all of that for 50 bucks if you act now. So that's the link for it. And you can get that for 50 right now. Any other time, it's going to go away. Like as soon as the stream is over, that's gone. What's up, Benjamin? Obama went to speak to a crowd in Jamaica and was asked when the U.S. would legalize weed. Obama's final response was, how are you going to stop Going to, when, how are you going to compete when all the big companies set up shop? What's up, Douglas? Yeah, I mean, th that's the reality because anybody that understands how business works, and I think that's one of the big things that is messing with people is they don't understand how business works. I watched a lot of the weed specials or the legalization of marijuana, and I just saw what these people went through. So these guys are going through a lot of regulatory hurdles. A lot of banks will not take their money. They're set up private security fund uh, firms. There's all kind of auxiliary businesses for the weed business that if you're not in there now, you're not going to know about this stuff. And all of these people who have built critical mass, who've gone through the bullshit, they're going to be the ones with the money to spread. They got the money in the product. Uh, someone's going to create a branded weed product. Um, there's so many things, but you need to be in there right now on the ground floor, the guy at the dispensary selling the weed so you can learn the business. And I've had a lot of people just like, I'm, I, when it comes here, I'm going to do it. I'm like, okay. Let's see. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to put this in here again. I just put the links. The comments, I don't know. The comments should be in real time. listening while I drive. Okay, so there's the action pack. Well, like I said, you can get the 10 steps, uh, 10 essential steps of hustling for 50 bucks in the stream only. So those of you who come later, you will not get that because you will not be in the stream and you can't get that stuff. Only I wish I could take advantage of all my funds are tied up in my new web store that I launched yesterday. We keep showing up here. I know I get what I need. What's up, Yolanda? Benjamin D. Got it. Thanks. Okay. Cool. So, like I said, I try to, you know, let's see, where are we? 
because I trust they're aware of the time because we're at the 55 minute mark and we did not lose audio today because I'm going to start charging the batteries every night before I launch. Uh, one of Bob Marley's sons had opened a weed dispensary, but he had the financials to do it. Fillmore, hey, Gia, constantly hear the cliche buyers are liars. What's the craziest lie a customer told you? I really don't know. I don't, you know, with my standpoint, I don't really deal with um, that kind of situation, point of sale situations like I did in the storage auction business. I really can't, I can't think of anything right now. Hemp shirts without sell weed. Could, I could see that. I could see that. What's up, GTW? I've learned more from these streams and vids than I did in five years of college. Well, thank you. One of the things that happens is what I give you guys is practical stuff that I've done or currently am doing. And I will get rid of stuff. Like, you know, the other day I showed the, how the email list went down and why it went down and what I did to participate in that situation. A lot of folks won't because they don't do a lot of stuff. I'm telling you. One of the reasons that I don't mess with a lot of people online is a lot of them, I'm not going to say they're bad people, but their experiences are vastly inflated. Uh, buyers are only liars if they do not trust the salesperson, Keith Flynn. Okay. Like I said, I just don't do point of sales and, and stuff like that. I just really don't. Uh, what I do is call an inbound marketing business model. I put out content, people find the content, I make offers. So it's inbound marketing with a direct response a component. That's how I make money. So essentially when someone finds a video, they're looking for what I'm talking about. So they're at that point, they self-qualify versus me going through questionnaires and trying to find qualified people. I try to create content that brings me qualified people. Gee, you the man. I learned so much about business since I found your channel 10 days ago. Appreciate that. There's only 1,500 videos to watch here. Uh, one of the things with business is I, I like the stuff. I started reading Inc. Magazine when I was in high school. It was just real fascinating that someone could start from nothing and just create this service or product or whatever and just change people's lives and in the process change their own life. It was pretty interesting. What's up, Barry? Greg Williams, are you going to do another collaboration with Abdul? I found it very useful. I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't say yes. I can't say no. I don't know because what I'm going in the direction, and you for you guys who get into the e-commerce course, which is going to kick off in January, um, we're going to uh, we're getting very big into marketing and media. Like I want to do what Nike has done. If you don't know how Nike operates, Nike is a marketing company. They're not a shoe manufacturer. Nike's biggest asset is its marketing. And knowing that and seeing what marketing has done for my business, we're going to get heavy into marketing and building e-commerce businesses outside of Amazon. So everybody's pretty much, if they're talking about e-commerce, the language on the streets is, if you're not on Amazon, you're stupid. You should be on Amazon. Now, I've done the research, and I know there are plenty of e-commerce sites who have nothing to do with Amazon, and they make millions and millions of dollars a month. Uh, DJ Phantom, they have their own website. I mean, they're a big company. They're doing wholesale. They're selling the Best Buy. They sell online. They, they have resellers. They're huge. Uh, their website gets like $4 million. No, no, seven. During the holiday season, they were getting like 11, 10 to 11 million hits per month. If you know anything about e-commerce and you can do the math and let's see there, I will do it. We'll do it because I'm feeling like that. Um, let's see. We will go and I'm going to put this in here one more again. For those of you who want the 10 step, the 10 essential steps to hustling. So let's say we're going to put 11, 11 million, right? So make sure I can see what I'm doing here. So we're going to do 11 million, right? That's 11 million hits. 
and we're going to go minus 99.5%. Okay? So that's 10 million. All right, so we're, we're saying 99.5% of the people who go to that website did not buy anything. So that leaves 55,000 people per month who buy something times their average, let's say, let's say 750 for a drone. That's $41 million a month. Do the math and their conversion rates are probably much better than what I've paid. Because when, when I go to a website and I do my audit, I'll ask myself, what if 99.5% of the people who come to this website are not converting? A good conversion is two to five percent. So even if they're only converting 0.5 percent with their traffic, they're making tens of millions of dollars per month. So that is the power of having a website that gets 11 million hits. Now, I put that out there because I know of nobody who's making tens of millions per year as a third party Amazon seller participates in these Facebook groups and talks. There are people who do it. Uh, there's one guy, he does about 50 million a year, but he has a whole organization. He has a whole system template and everything. He's a Jewish guy. Um, totally different, totally different animal. So when I hear people like, you can't make money online without Amazon or eBay, I'm like, bullshit. You haven't looked for these people. I have and I found them. And that's just from their website. We don't know what their wholesale arm looks like. And that's, I mean, and DJI is an international company. They're making buku money. They're making generational wealth type money per month. Somebody is just rolling in cash. All right, catch you later, Jacob. Let's see. All right. So have we hit that? Yep. We're getting ready to bounce. All right. I'm put that out there one more time. You'll have a few minutes to get it because once the stream disappears, that's going to go. So with that, I'm going to say, be sure to share this stream with someone you like, someone you care about. Be sure to subscribe. And when this renders and becomes a permanent video, just come back and leave a comment. So with that, I'm out.